Amen. God bless you. I'm excited. Y'all glad to be in the land of the living. Amen. On this first Tuesday of the year, 2021. 2021, and it's an important day for uh, Georgia. I hope and pray that everyone got out and vote, whether it was early voting or voting today or taking your ballot in, whatever you did, that is your, your duty. Uh, our ancestors and people fought for that, op for that opportunity for us to vote. Let your voice be heard. So I pray that you voted. And I'm not sure if, it, if any polls are still open, but uh, ain't no need of you complaining if you hadn't voted. So I pray that you uh, voted today. Amen. God is a good God, and he's worthy to be praised. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and are saved. Amen. I'm so glad and honored to uh, sit before you just to encourage you in some way in God's word. I love, I love to try, or that, that's my assignment, to inspire, to encourage you. And to uh, even warn you and help you in this thing that we call life. Life is a beautiful thing. And I'm thanking God and you ought to be thankful for the opportunity. Amen. For life. Well, before we get started, I want to, uh, first of all, I want to continue to uh, solicit your prayers. And for us that God will give us ways to be effective not only be effective and and we ask for your support in the ministry i think my son already told you the different uh ways that you can give feel free to give feel free to give and we thank you for your giving uh i don't put too much emphasis on it but we certainly uh, can't do it without your support we need your support amen and we thank you for your support all right i'm going to uh uh, let's pray. Let's pray. Continue to pray for those that are in hospital, hospice and jails, prison. Uh, pray for the homeless. Pray for sick and shut in. We want to keep them in prayer. Uh, we, For some people, uh, this is just another day of, of trials and tribulations. So we want to pray for them. Pray for them that God will help them, undergird them. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you because of who you are. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. All of the praise and the glory belong to you, God. Thank you, Lord God, for letting us be in the land of living. Thank you for another day we never seen before. Thank you for this first Tuesday of the year, 2021. The opportunity, God, to help us to improve Help us, Lord God, to, to draw closer to you. We thank you for this opportunity. Now, God, we made our request known unto you. Would, you. would you look down on the sick? Send your healing power, Lord God. Those that are in the hospitals, shelters, those that are faced with eviction, those that don't know how to, they're going to pay their bills, do bills that do. I ask you right now, God, to help them. God, open up a door that no man can open. Make a way out of no way as only you can. We thank you for it right now. Comfort those that are in bereavement. Put your loving arms around them, Lord God. Let them understand and let them know that you're right there with them. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the people of God shout amen. All right, I didn't hear nobody, but y'all said it. I hope you did. Amen. God is a good God. Tonight, I want to, <clears throat> like I foresaid, I want to talk about, this was a, a, a thought that was on my mind. I uh, want to talk about don't be anxious about anything. Let's, let's try, let's do our very best to work on anxiety. Anxiety. And uh, uh, that that's... Uh, even right now as we speak, there's people that's watching the polls or watching the results of this uh, election 
and just anxious and uh, expecting and whatever and trying to figure it out. But one thing I learned about God, when you cast your cares upon him, you let him handle it. You, be, you, you sit up wasting your time. Uh, the song we used to sing, well, we still sing it, Trouble in My Way. <laughs> I have to cry sometime. But then we go back and say, I know Jesus is going to fix it. Then, no, no, I lay awake at night. That's all right. I, I start thinking about that thing. No, that ain't all right if I don't. If I done prayed, if I already made up in my mind that Jesus is going to fix it, that ain't all right. If I know he's going to fix it, I'm going to lay my head down and go to sleep and rest. So that's what I want to talk about tonight, to encourage you uh, about those that are anxious or, or anxiety. Anxiety. Now, I don't claim I'm aware of different anxiety disorders and uh, different it's different than uh, what we call an everyday anxiety. And uh, with anxiety disorders, those uh, situations or conditions need to be treated. And so we don't pretend, I don't pretend to be a therapist, nor am I a doctor. So I recommend if you have those type of disorders, with God's help, get some treatment, get some professional help. There's people that can help you uh, because some people are they just are worriers or uh, just worry about every and anything. Uh, I mean, they, they worry they worry if the cat run across the street, all kind of stuff. No, that's a disorder, and I'm aware of that. So seek you some professional help. But I'm just talking about things that we worry about that we shouldn't worry about. Uh, we 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 have a tendency to stress ourselves out and worry, be restless. we restless and fearful about things. Have you ever, ever experienced that, that gnawing feeling in the pit of your stomach, that ugly feeling and uh, uh, of seeing a bleak situation? And, and before you know it, it you, you worrying about it and stressing out and don't even have a clue of how it's going to turn out. And perhaps that helplessness goes along with that. So I want to talk to you a little bit tonight uh, about the power that we have to help us. God has given us power. God, the truth of the matter is that you have the greatest power in the universe on your side. You have the almighty God. On your side, the creator of the ends of the earth, holding you up in the palm of your hands. Uh, I'm looking at my hands now. Uh, uh, my, In fact, I'm behind my hands. But the truth of the matter is, God is holding me up in his hands. Holding me up. He is holding you up in his hands. So, we, we, should, we should understand that power that we have, that God is holding us up. And when you believe that, there is nothing that we should be worrying about. He will hold you up because he, he knows everything. He, he causes everything. Now, he causes things to, ha things to happen in our lives, uh, uh, and he'll turn it around for our, for our betterment. Uh, I was looking at a few scriptures earlier and talking. You can find a lot of them in David. David was saying, David said in uh, Psalms 121 and 5, you don't have to read it. I'm just going to kind of briefly go over it. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade and at your right hand. Psalms 8, 118 and 6, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Oh, I can go on. Y'all know this one, 23rd Psalms, about the fourth, fourth, fourth verse. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death. What y'all? What did it say? I fear no evil. Why do I, why shouldn't I feel evil? Eve, fear evil. Why should I be afraid when I got the Almighty God with me? 
Yeah. Why? Because you are with me. God, the creator, is with you. Then he say, yea, though I walk through the valley shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, comfort me. Joshua said in first verse in the ninth, uh, first chapter and ninth verse, he said, listen, listen, have not I commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So we have to understand that, my people, my uh, children and people of God. We have to understand. So this is how we can kind of dispel and help with our anxiety. Anxiety. Now, uh, even in Matthew, you know, he talks about the sparrow. He said, are not two sparrows sold for, for a copper coin? And not one of them fall to the ground apart from the Father's will. That's in Matthew, the 10th chapter. But every, and here's, here's what I really, here's something that you and I don't even know nothing about. He knows every number of hairs on our head. So if he know that, he know everything about us. And we just got to learn how to, uh, to cast our cares upon him. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. First Peter. First Peter. First Peter 5. That's what I want you to see. First Peter 5. I kind of briefly talked about it a little bit already. It says, First Peter 5 in the seventh verse, it says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Do you know if you've overcome with anxiety, the devil is trying to destroy you? He's, he's trying to catch you in your weak moment. It's kind of like, you, you, you know, a, a lion that's uh, surveying a prey of willoughbys or prey of uh, buffaloes. He don't go after the strongest one, the, the one that's uh, robust. He looks for the weak one. He looks for the one that's lagging behind. He looks for that one that's small, that's straggling, that's limping, whatever. He looks for that. That's just the way the enemy is with us. He's looking for an opportunity to come and attack you, to devour you. And if we're sitting, if we're sitting here and allowing anxiety to overtake us, the devil will get you. At your weakest moment. So that's why we got to make sure, uh, do, do I worry every now and then? You know what? We all have to fight against it. But I have to remind myself who I am. And I want to remind you too. So the devil, the adversary, is like as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Ninth verse. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions were accomplished in your brethren that were in the world. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. I was telling somebody the other day, or even today, they was talking about uh, the, the difficulties that they're going through and all of these type of things. And, uh, why am I going through this? Why this? Why, why, why? You know, sometimes God uh, allow things to happen for us, to us. Uh, and some of it is no fault of our own, but then there's some of it is, is due to our disobedience. Uh, uh, you, you know, so he allows certain things to happen. But he will help you through whatever situation you go. Do good things, do bad things happen to good people? Yes. I would not sit up here and tell you that. Yes, it would happen. But the God that we serve, the almighty God, will keep you. He will establish you. We just read it. He said, I'm going to make you perfect. I'm going to establish you, and I'm going to strengthen you, but I want to settle you. How can I settle you? How can you be settled? Knowing that it's in his hands. <laughs> it's in his hand. He's holding you up with his hand. Oh, hallelujah. I like this myself. 
Look at that. The 11th verse, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. When you and I are gone off this scene, are cut here on this earth and gone off, the Lord is still holding everybody else up, holding them up, still on his job, still on his post. You know what? <clears throat> uh, at the best, anxiety, and I wrote this down, anxiety distract us from our relationship with God. And the truth of the matter is, he is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. <laughs> At his worst, anxiety can cripple. Is a crippling disease that takes our mind off of God and plunge, plunge our thoughts into darkness. But God wants us, he wants so much more for us than to walk through life Full of fear and full of worry, full of anxiety. Another thing I thought about, uh, even on a, a natural uh, level or on a for our natural bodies, worrying and anxiety causes other ailments. It causes hypertension. It can encourage cancer. I think I read somewhere in there uh, 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 hypertension and anxiety attacks and worrying and stressing and. Uh, because we're worrying about something that we can't control. So that's why he was telling us, listen, don't you worry about it. Cast it upon me. Put it in my hand. Pray about it. If you go in the old sense, if you pray about it, don't worry about it. Put it in God's hands. I know it's difficult because uh, we we watching the clock. We get we we looking for the we it's a deadline coming up. Wondering what God's gonna do. If he's gonna fix it. If he's gonna work it out. I don't know what he's gonna do. No, he don't. But I do know one thing. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stress. Some of y'all right now need to just take a deep breath and just relax and, and, and go to sleep. You know what I want you to do? You need to start. You need to battle. You need to battle for your rest. You need to fight for your rest. You know, uh, uh, G Jesus said, I think it was in uh, uh, uh sixth chapter of Matthew. Now, let's go there. I want to read that. So for me, I love this. I love the sixth chapter of Matthew. Uh, sixth chapter. Well, where was that? No, no. The 11th chapter. Let's go there. 11th chapter of Matthew. And I believe it's about the 28th verse. Look at what Jesus said. Y'all need to remind yourself. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Who's going to give you rest? Jesus going to give you rest. So you got to fight for it. Then he said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn of me. Seek me. You're going to find me. Try to, try to seek me and find me. You learn of me. For, uh, for And then he said, come learn of me. For I am meek. I got it. And lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest. Somebody say rest. Rest for your soul. And then he goes on to say, listen, listen, people of God, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I want you all, I want you to learn how to fight for your rest. Don't, don't sit up there and stress yourself out. And then you know what? Have you ever, have you ever worried about a situation, trying to figure it out? trying to understand it and all that was for naught and God turned it out and it turned out and worked out for your good. <laughs> then you think about it, say, oh boy, I wasted a lot of time. I sat up, I wasted a whole lot of time and God fixed it anyway. Truth of the matter is when you was worrying, worrying didn't fix it anyway. God fixed it. Why? Uh, you wasted a lot of time, wasted a lot of energy, losing hair, losing sleep, taking high blood pressure. Med Some of us just need to relax and stop worrying. God will help you. Worrying about tomorrow, worrying about this, worrying about next week. How I'm going to do this? How I'm going to listen? He already told. Look at, uh, just thought of it. Matthew, it's even in Matthew, 11th chapter. 11th chapter and the uh, 28th verse. No, 
6th chapter, excuse me, we just read 11. Y'all get that. Go back and, and read about what Jesus said to go to him. But Matthew, excuse me, uh, the 6th chapter, that's what I like. 6th chapter. I love to look at, I love to study and read the words of Jesus and what he has promised us. I, I love that. Look at that 25th verse. Matthew 6 and 26, 25. Jesus said, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, for what ye shall eat, for what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What shall ye put on? Don't worry about what you can put on. Is not life more than meat and the body, uh, the body than raiment? Look at what he's saying. I'm going to tell you. Look at what Jesus said, 26 verse. Behold, the fowls of the air, look at them. They, they, the fowls of the they sow not, neither do they reap, neither do they gather into the barns. Gather, they don't gather up a lot of stuff. They don't need, but yet, yet your heavenly father feeds them. He takes care of the sparrow. Wherever the sparrow go. They coming from the, the, the north to the south, where back and forth, whatever. You know what? They take a different route all the time. God always provides for them. And they don't, they don't sit down and wonder, wonder where can I stop at? Where, where, where's the nearest, nearest food? Where can, where's the nearest restaurant? They don't, where can I, where's the field? Where can I jump down and get some crop? Where, they don't worry about it. They know. They just fly until they get hungry. God provides. God make a way for them. Didn't he say that? He said, I take care of the fowls. I'm your heavenly father. I feed them. Then he goes to ask you, a, ask you a question in the latter part of that 21st, 26th verse. Are ye not much better than they? In other words, in other words, if I take care of the fowls, the sparrows, the ants, the, the the bugs, y'all don't like bugs, but get God provide for them too. You just want them out your house <laughs> and provide somewhere else. Even rats, I don't want them. They, they God provide for them. He make a way for them. Aren't you not better than they? Come on, y'all. You can read that a little bit more. In the well, I'll read it. Which of you, by thought, can take can add one cubit to his stature? And why take a thought for raiment? Consider the, here it is, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. They don't worry about, right now the grass is laying dormant. He ain't sitting up and worrying about where I'm going to get some water from, where if I'm going to come back up. They ain't worried about it, it's just laying dormant. Because he know whether you water it or God going to send some rain. Hallelujah. He's going to take care of the lilies of the field. And yet I say unto you, the uh, 29th verse, Then says Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God clothe the grass of the field, which day, which today is, tomorrow is cast into the oven, which he not much more clothes you, in other words, if I take care of the grass and, and, and go, you know, and they eat, there's one blade of grass that don't go unnoticed in God's sight. Take care of the grass. Don't you know he'll clothe you? Then he asks you, and then he say, oh, ye of little faith. The lack of faith creates anxiety. The lack of faith creates anxiety. And the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. The beginning of anxiety is the end of faith. And the beginning of true faith is the end of anxiety. Ooh, y'all better get it. So what can I do? Work on that. Lord, help me to increase my faith so I can decrease the anxiety that I have on a day-to-day -day basis. We all have it. We all have uncertainty. 
You're looking at the bills and trying to make ends do, and you start worrying, where am I going to get this from? Another bill come in, this, oh, Lord, things happen, car break down, need a battery, need a pair of shoes, need a tire, light bill do, got a gas bill do. Don't you worry about it. God is going to fix it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I have so many great testimonies. Uh, I can think of things that uh, I got to my last dime and didn't figure out, and God fixed it and allowed things to happen, and you'll be able to go on and say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for fixing it. So he's going to take care of you. Therefore, take no thought, saying what ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, and with all ye be clothed. So what I'm saying is to take uh to, don't worry about it. What can I do? Preacher, look at that 33rd verse. You say, seek him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's what I'm doing. How can I, how can I get rid of the anxiety? Just continue to seek God. Go after the things of God. And everything else that you need shall be added to you. No, you say, let me get it right. Seek ye First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. 30, take, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the, is the evil thereof. Give us this day our daily bread. God is going to protect you. God is going to keep you. Uh, why, why are you trying to figure it out? God has already got it worked out. Yes, when you go through some obstacles, yes, when you go through some little trials and tribulations, yes. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to fight for my rest. I'm going to continue to battle for it because the battle is up to the Lord. So uh, there can be so many reasons to be tempted to be anxious and have anxiety. We can... We have money issues, financial issues, uh, family issues. Uh, and another thing that I've been learning, the older I get, some things you worrying about grown people and making the right decisions. Man, listen, if you done taught them and you showed them how to do it and they want to do just the opposite, don't you worry yourself. You can't make them no more. <laughs> you can't make them. You can't make them. Listen, if they go through stuff, because of their disobedience, don't worry about it. That, that's something that they may need to help them get in line. So ain't no need to be sitting up here worrying about it and stressing out about it. Don't be anxious. And these are the things that we worry about. Being anxious about our family, uh, school, and right now people are worrying about this political situation that's going on. <laughs> Wondering who's going to be in office. Worrying about this. Worrying about that. Man, it doesn't matter. It, 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 you know what? The end of the day, God will take care of all of us, regardless of who's in office. Woo, hallelujah. Y'all believe that tonight? Stop worrying. Stop worrying. Worrying about illness, the unknown. Some people are worrying. You know, have you ever, you ever got a pain close to your chest and around your heart in this area, and it could just be gas, and that pain hits you? First thing you say, oh, Lord. I'm having, oh, Lord, like Fred Sanford. I'm, I'm having, oh, I'm having a big one. I'm coming to see you, Elizabeth. <laughs> and all it is is gas or you need to burp or whatever and take whatever you need to <laughs> drink your soda and get rid of it. That enemy will have you worrying. Get a pain, check in and out, and they do run some tests. Doctor say, okay, I'll give you the results next week. And from now from that time you did the test to the time you got to next week, you worried. And I'm telling you what I know. Move something out of you, and then you worried the whole time. Wonder if it's cancerous. Wonder if I'm going to die. Oh, my aunt died the same way. You remember that, that cancer, all this stuff running in my family. Oh, and you just worried. That devil just keep on. He just keep on. He just piled it on. And you sitting up there worrying, stressing yourself out. Stressing yourself out. I remember, I remember I had trouble with my elbow one time, and I thought, sure. I said, oh, Lord, uh, I'm going to give y'all a little testimony. I said, oh, Lord, something wrong with my elbow. They're going to have to do some surgery. Oh, man, 
And man, I couldn't hardly move it. It was so painful, all kind of stuff running in my mind. And, and, and I said, oh, Jesus, what in the world? It had me ache up at night, and I went to see a specialist. Man, I was went in there, and I'm giving, letting them know I thought they were going to do surgery. I worried and worried and worried. And that girl said, okay, Mr. Anderson, I'll be right back. I said, what you finna do? I'm going to give you a shot for it. She went out, and I, I said, a shot? I thought I was going to have to do surgery. She said, no, I do this a thousand times a day. Give me that shot. You'll be all right. Give it through two or three days. Do you know that pain was gone? But I worried. I was worrying about what's going to happen. I'm going to lose. You know, the devil's, I'll have you thinking, I'm going to lose my arm. <laughs> all kind of stuff. It's kind of like now. You get a slight sniffle or whatever you're going through now, and, oh, Jesus, is that the COVID? <laughs> is that COVID-19? Oh, Lord. I got, I got man, listen. You're sitting up, don't, don't worry yourself. So some, and that's the enemy causes us to worry and stress ourselves out. Whatever it is, God's going to take care of it. So you got to learn how to put this in perspective. No matter how hopeless the situation look, if you put your trust in God and let your requests be made known unto him, this is the very important cry. This is very important. Cry out to him. Pour out your heart to him. Give him your fears. And you can overcome everything that you, you can, you can become, you can find rest for your soul. Even though you go through, you don't have to battle. You don't have to go through the, the, the stress of anxiety. Cast it upon him. Let him have it. Leave your care at the altar. Take it to the Lord and leave it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Cast it upon him. He got it. So that's how we can relieve these things. So uh, going forward this in this 2021, ask God to help you with anxiety. Help you, help you not to sit up and worry. Man, go up there. Go fly a kite. Go jump out of a heliplane, helicopter. Do something. Don't worry yourself. Don't stress yourself out. Go out there and in your garden and do something. Worry about if I'm, if I'm going to fall out. I'm, I'm, uh, man, listen. God is going to keep you. He said in his word, y'all know it, I will keep you in perfect peace if I do what? Keep my mind stayed on him. That's how we can get rid of anxiety. That's how we can get rid of fear. Amen. And even if you do have an ailment or disease or something, don't you worry about it. God's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of you. He ain't going to put no more on you than you can bear. If he give it to you, if you allow, he, he's going to strengthen you. He's going to preserve you. He's going to hold you up in his hand. We read it. So uh, trust in the Lord. Y'all know it. With all your heart, lean not to stress. <laughs> lean not to anxiety. Lean not to fear. But in all your ways, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. We'll leave you with four thoughts. How can I help? How, how can I do? Get rid of anxiety. Pray. Pray about it. He said, cast your cares upon me. Tell me about it. Make your re request known. And meditate on God's word. Meditate. Remind yourself. Go back and read these scriptures. Go back and look at him and what he said. Don't worry about it. I got you. If I take care of the sparrow, I got you. If I take care of the grass, I got you. Consider these things. Consider the lilies of the field. I got you. If I just seek him first and, with, and his righteousness, that's so meditate. Number three, release it. Release it. The Bible says resist the devil. That's resistant. No, no, I'm not going to let this thing get me. I'm going to release it. Somebody getting this tonight. I pray you are. Release it and receive what he's promised you. Oh, Lord, I know you're going to fix it. I know. I don't know when. I don't know how. I don't know. But I do know you promised me that you're going to fix it. You're going to work it out. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray about it. I'm going to meditate on your word. I'm going to release this anxiety. 
and I'm going to receive the promises of God. Amen. I enjoyed myself tonight. I enjoyed myself. And I want you to remember that my God, say your God, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I pray that you got something, gathered something out of that thought. And I want you to relax yourself. Relax yourself. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Go on to sleep. Relax yourself. Watch your favorite movie. Do something exciting. Don't worry about it. God's going to take care of it. Don't worry about the economy. Don't worry about who's in and out the office. God's going to take care of you. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. Amen. God bless you is our prayer. And I want you, those that we've been praying for, we ain't going to worry. God, we're going to leave them in God's hand. God's going to fix it. God's going to make a way out of no way. It's in God's timing, and it's in God's hand. And so I encourage you tonight to, to get rid of that anxiety, work on it, and relax. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath and just relax your mind and put it in God's hand. Amen. Ain't no need to stand up all night stressing yourself out because worrying don't fix a thing. All it does is causes more problems and more ailments and uh, uh, losing a lot of sleep and time, and we don't need that. You need to get your rest, get your sleep. Sleep, lay down and go to sleep. Ask God to give you a good night's sleep. And when that devil come out, start rebuking that devil when it come to your mind. Say that I rebuke you. Put the blood on it in the name of Jesus. God bless you, my friend, on this first Tuesday. I uh, pray that you've uh, got a few nuggets out of that lesson. Uh, and I want you to hold on to it and uh, recite it to yourself and go back. Look up on some more scriptures to kind of, uh, uh, when you meditate on God's word, he, he, he's promised us. God don't play with us. His word is gone out, and it's not going to return void. I believe God, and I believe he'll do what he say. Amen. God bless you. Till the next time, peace be with you. And I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Bless you, clap your hands for this study today.